Good evening, everyone. Um, today's going to be a rant about something I have not talked about. It's something out of the norm for me. Uh, FYI, I look and feel like shit because I just did some serious cardio. So, uh, excuse that. I'm sure you'll still get the message behind this, but I had 30 minutes to essentially torture myself, but I had to keep myself mentally engaged and involved in that process. Um, how what I was thinking was, and I've thought about this quite frequently, but we live in a leaderless society and there are so many people out there who have something to offer to the world. Part of it is because of our education system. Um, it's not just the education system, though. Okay, I'm not going to point the finger and say, oh, those people need to improve the education system because the other part of it is you. Um, it may not be you watching this video, but it's somebody going to watch this video some down the road, somewhere, sometime, that these people, and I'm going to say these people, as in you, the people I'm blaming, and the education system, okay? So when I speak of this, I say everybody has a unique mark to leave on the world, and we have a choice. The choice is whether we want to pursue those gifts that we were given, and I say given uh, as in my Christian beliefs. Um, so if you're not Christian, I just think that the way you were born with, okay? Because I'm not here to preach religion to you. So you have these gifts, whatever gifts you have. You can leave it, make a choice. You can make a choice to leave a mark on the world, or you can make a choice to not leave a mark on the world. You can make a choice to be um, to yourself. Um, that's okay. Here's the problem, is the education system sets up an environment. We are forced into a system, and that system teaches us to be part of a, a cog inside of a machine, and to not use what we're naturally good at, or society has made it to where our skills are not reimbursable to create a living, okay? Um, entrepreneurs back in the past were condemned. They were seen as worse than thieves. And it's because they were working outside the system that was established. And the world hated them. I mean, society hated them in general. And, uh, but they were the innovators. They were the people that pushed change, the industrial revolution. Um, entrepreneurs, I'm going to use that word in this particular case, the artist and during the Renaissance, people who challenged status quo and people who just felt things weren't right. And we all have those things where everybody, I've met, never met a single person who said, oh, everything's perfect. But the question is, why don't you do something about it? Maybe it's on a one-on-one -on -one level. You see someone contributing to violence. You see someone contributing to domestic violence. You see someone living in a bad relationship that's a friend of yours, why don't you offer your advice? Why don't you say, look, and then the other person needs to be open-minded and humble enough and have enough humility to go, you're right. How do I step back and fix this problem? Or how do I um, change the way that things are in my life? Sorry, my screen kind of just dimmed. So it's important that we understand that we can make a change. Oop, let's see if I can get this thing to brighten up again. Hello, it's too dark. Okay, so, there we go. Let's get some light in here. Anyway, so the change is important. And being able to institute change is even more important. Uh, not just for us, but our future generations, our kids. What kind of world are they going to live in in 2040? What kind of world are they going to live in in 2050? Um, it's important that we make good choices. Who we're going to marry, our spouses, who we're going to date. Have the standard bar. I try to live every element of my life, and I say try because I fail in areas like most people, but I try in every area of my life to hold a high standard. Um, that, that includes the way I execute myself in business, the way I execute myself in relationships with people, the way I execute myself in my physical condition, the way I eat, the, uh, the books I read, um, what I do with my time, and how I devote my time to others. Uh, just having a high standard. But then you can be, you know, one of these other types of personalities I talk about a lot, MBTI, and say, uh, well, who says that is high and who says that is low? If you're already saying that, you're looking for excuses. I'm sorry, I don't care what MBTI type you are. Stop making excuses. Um, do something for someone else. The chances are, when I, when I was young, I was about uh, 22 years old, and I worked for an office, and in that office, my immediate supervisor... He asked me, he said, what do you want to do with your life? And I said, I'd like to retire early and just live life to the fullest. And he looked at me and he said, that is one of the most immature things I've ever heard in my life. And it kind of just threw me back because previously everybody had said, 
wow, you're so mature. And he was the first person that said, that is one of the most immature things I've ever heard in my life. Like, whoa, where's this guy coming from? Naturally, I, I thought he was crazy. I thought he was just so stuck in the entrepreneurial system or the rather the business world or whatever he was doing that he didn't understand freedom or he was conditioned to think a, a certain way. Uh, then he said, the only way that I've ever found that brings happiness is to, to serve others. And maybe that's true, maybe that's not, but it, it's a, it, it was a changing moment in my life and it's realized that I need to give service to others. It's why I do these videos. I don't charge for this. I don't care to charge for this, nor would I say this is high enough quality to charge for. But I want someone out there to be able to watch these videos and pick up even a small fraction of insight what are, through my experiences. And uh, I'd love for people to do the same, you know, and I can get information from them and maybe improve my own life. I think we should all just kind of bond together and uh, challenge the situations we have. Why school has an extroverted thinking preference. And stop looking at people who use introverted thinking like they're stupid. Um, introverted thinkers revolutionize. They are brilliant. And we should look at them for their strengths. And we should use them in the society and accept them and know that we can capitalize on the way they think. You know, I already have a way of an education system that I could imagine that it would be set for introverted thinking. And uh, in my head, ultimately, I'd like to be able to create it. And uh, that's why I'm in business right now is because I've got to have enough revenue to be able to end profits to be able to invest in an education system or even some kind of way of educating people online um, to, and not through these YouTube videos, obviously, but from more traditional education. How would our school system look in 2050? Um, our declining standards of education. Uh, I talked to a sociologist the other day and he said, he said, uh, in the future, we are going to be the most credentialed society ever, but we're going to be the least educated society in history. And what he meant by that is we can have a hundred letters after our last name, okay? But are we really going to know what those letters represent? When someone says, I'm a PhD, 50 years ago, we thought that person was smart. We thought that person knew everything, definitely knew the basics of history. How old is the United States? They knew it, right? They, they were educated. Educated me meant educated. Today, educated means having a $100,000 piece of paper or however much you paid for it sitting on your wall. And you, you were conditioned to take tests. Let's cram for this test. Let's not find an interest in this subject. Let's find a way to pass this course. If you're saying pass this course, you're already off course, okay? Passing this course is not important, okay? Getting that paper makes you not competitive in today's society. Okay, because everybody has the paper. Anybody who can apply for a federal loan has the paper on their wall unless they, they don't care about it, unless they don't have any interest in going to college, which I don't blame. Okay, so the college education standard is down. So that's, it's a dual problem. Education sets up an environment for uh, essentially for cramming and not learning material. And then uh, the students are setting a low standard bar. Yes, there's this equality movement where, hey, we've got to target low socioeconomic status so we can uh, bring these people into our schools, right? And I say these people. A lot of those people are ambitious, and giving them a chance is great, okay? But the problem is when you have a low price barrier, whether it's through grants, whether it's through available loans, or whether it's through no credit checks, or whatever method you want to use to bring people into the education system, uh, you're going to bring in people that are not the right market, Okay, uh, college used to have a standard, okay, and everybody should follow the same standard. I'm not saying that, you know, whites should do one standard, blacks should do one standard, uh, greens should do another standard. I'm not saying that. I'm saying everybody should take a standard, okay? The standard should be an entrance exam and with some kind of standard, you know, uh, that type of thing. So it's important that we raise our own personal standards so people around you can be inspired, um, that's what we need to do as a society. We need to start inspiring others to make changes. Live life to the fullest. Become healthier with yourself. And I mean healthier mentally, healthier physically, healthier in all kinds of ways. So it's imperative that we make a change in ourselves. And then we bond together and become this culture where we can institute change. 
you don't understand. I mean, and you as in whoever I'm talking to that doesn't understand. But we as a society do, do not understand the power of communion, of bringing people together. Nothing can stop if everybody decided to do one thing. And yes, this sounds idealistic. Yes, it probably won't happen. But two people are greater than one person. Two people are, it's like synergy. One plus one equals three. Four people is like two plus two equals 16. Okay, that kind of mental power, there's no, there's no comparison. I mean, I can only do so much on my own. I really can. I, I can't conquer the world on my own. I can't, even though I know I'm an ENTJ, naturally I'm going to do whatever it takes to win. And whatever it takes to win is educating the society that they need to raise the standard bar. Okay, and like I said, I work every day to raise my own standard bar. It doesn't mean that mine's impeccably high. It just means that my standard bar is always improving. I get a 96%, I'm thinking, why didn't I get a 97? Why didn't I get a 98? Why didn't I get a 99? What did I not do? Okay, if, you know, uh, my workout was cut short, maybe I just ran out of energy, I got to look back and say, what happened? What happened with my mind? Why is my mind not straight? Okay, um, I do struggle in areas. I have my weak points, like we all do. And it's important that we identify those weak points and then find people who complement those weak points. It really sucks when you have a problem and you don't know who to turn to because everybody's standards so low. Example, let's say that I have a relationship problem. I'm in a, any kind of serious relationship, right? Not that I am right now, but point is, if I were in a serious relationship and I have a relationship problem, it's a problem that's so far out here that the low standard bar of everybody else is going to tell me, ah, oh, you know, when they do that, you just slap them. Yeah, just, just slap them, you know what I'm saying? You just, yeah. No, you don't want to do any of that, all right? It's... It, that's that's not how I resolve conflict. So that standard bar go, got, has to go up and up. I love surrounding myself with people that have a standard bar. And more than likely, people who are watching this video are naturally curious people. So you're probably not the people I'm talking to. Um, yes, there's trolls on YouTube. Yes, there's all kinds of things. If you're trolling, ugh, why? It doesn't do any good. It really doesn't. You're not going to change anyone's mind. You're just going to, you know... Reflect your anger onto the world. Okay, nobody cares, right? Just get off YouTube and go do something with your life. Um, or find a way to change or something to inspire you to stop being such a dick. But, um, you know, ultimately, we have to be respectful of each other. If you've ever watched any of my feedback on any comments, whether they're my own videos or someone else's videos, I try to be as professional as possible. Um, my image is important, my online image as well as my offline image. So we all need to work on raising our own standards. And even me, I need to work every day on raising that standard bar. So we, as a culture, need to raise the standard. We need to raise our educational standard. We need to raise our personal standards. And with our personal standards, maybe we can raise the educational standard. Could you imagine if everybody started getting high grades, what would happen to school? What would happen to the, what would happen to the education system? They'd have to improve their standard bar. We would be benchmarking every single time. And what would we know? What kind of information would we come across? What would our kids of the future generations have to learn? We don't need to be teaching things that are not applicable. We need to teach interpersonal communication. We need to teach how to talk to one another, how to build a relationship with people. We need to remember what our people ancestors did in the past to create strong networks, sitting down face to face and having a good conversation. Get off your damn phones. Okay, texting is not cool. Texting is for memos, like, hey, I'll see you at 6, okay? Texting is not for, hey, what's up? Oh, nothing, you're just chilling, what you doing? Oh, cool, man. You know, none of that, or I don't want, I don't do that. Texting is not cool. If you do that, that's fine, um, but it doesn't, I, I me, I, I kind of got slapped in the face with it, so in, in your defense, um, uh, I am blunt, and so texting has never really worked for me, because if you don't read my sarcasm through text, it just sounds like I'm a total dick. So, uh, if you don't read me very well, which I'm very straightforward, then uh, more, more than likely I'll destroy a relationship over text. Some of you are probably not that way, with your little winky faces and emoticons and emojis and all that, but um, ultimately, we need to get out of narcissism. We need to put time and invest time in other people. Yes, you may be an introvert, yes, but you got to understand introversion is, is your preference, but there's things you have to do to survive in society. Um, and there's things you have to do to, I believe, contribute, should you wish to contribute. If you've gotten this far in the video, you at least got some knowledge out of this. 
And um, but the narcissism has got to stop. The selfie world. Um, stop taking selfies. You know, I'm a vain person. I, I can admit that. I love to work out because I love the way I feel and look. So it's not that, you know, I want to be healthy. And um, I'm not perfect. But, you know, and I think we're all natural narcissists. At some point, some level, we're always looking out for ourselves. Um, I've never met one true altruist in my life. I think being honest with yourself about that is important. But our new age generation, I'm talking 15, I'm even 20 and younger. You guys are crazy. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. How do you take 500 selfies within a five minute time span? I mean, there's beautiful. There's a beautiful world out there. There's plenty of things to take pictures of if you love taking pictures. But why is it of yourself every two minutes? Or the Snapchat revolution or these other technologies that we're, we're introducing as these major corporations are introducing into the world. And... Uh, I feel if you are one of these major corporations, you have a responsibility to negate the effect that your technology has on society, as well as provide the benefits of it. Technology has, is a double-edged sword. It's very beneficial. But you have to negate the side effects. You don't create a prescription drug and it cures one problem, but creates six more. It has to go through rigorous testing where the side effects become so diminished that the drug is admissible. So it's the same thing in real life. You don't create technology that moves generations decades backward without having some kind of contingency to move decade, generations forward. You've got to minimize the damage that that technology is going to introduce to the world. And it's not like they didn't see it coming. They knew. And it's brilliant to want to make money. I love money. I think making money is brilliant because if, you, if you're the right person with money, you can really influence change into the world. But... Um, it's, it's important that we, we have to dedicate ourselves to making these kind of changes and, uh, and making sure that we're protecting technologies that are released and we're protecting people from the, the potential consequences of the technology. Anytime you introduce something in the marketplace, whether you're, if you're an entrepreneur, you've got to think about what negative effect does this create? Do I really care about the end user or am I just trying to, I see a demand and I want to fill it? Okay. In the end, it's not about you. And uh, whether you're a multi-billionaire or you're a broke entrepreneur, okay, or you're an employee, um, doesn't matter. And uh, I've been a broke entrepreneur most of my life because I want to change the way that I want to change. I want to change the world the way that I want to change, and I want to leave my mark. And so be delusional. Think big. Um, think strong. And think you can do anything, because you can. You know, I think we need to really, really remember that. And we really need to leave a message that the world needs us. The world needs every single one of your skill sets. You know, if you're an artist, we need that. There's nothing like music that just can stimulate someone's soul. We're looking at a piece of art and being able to connect to somebody through art. I, I, I'm astonished that... We don't even love art anymore as a culture. I mean, I mean, talking 25 and younger, it's very rare. Um, we're losing focus on what connection is. And at the very core level, we all crave connection. I don't care who you are at some point. You want connection with somebody, friend, family, relationship. Even if it's one or two people, it's not a million people, it's not five people. Some people want a million connections, some people want one connection. They just need something. We crave something, even introverted people crave some kind of connection. A core level, as our society teaches, we all should be married. Um, that's a hard thing to break, especially if you were raised in that kind of environment where they teach you that. Now, a lot of you are in self-denial where you say, well, you know, I don't want to get married. I think it's stupid, blah, 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 and you're in denial. Whether you can't get a date or whatever, I don't know, but I think that most of you who say that are in total denial. I think that at some point, you just realize it's difficult, and you're right. And I'm not. I'm saying what I'm saying here is not that you're too chicken to get a date, or you're saying the wrong thing. What I'm saying is, even the person you're talking to, the person you think you're trying to get a date with, they can't connect to you either. So they're going to find you uninteresting, just like anybody watching this video is going to find me uninteresting. In fact, I, I doubt anybody's going to get this long in the video. It's it's because I 
This 20 minute video or however long it's going to be by the time I hit stop is going to be so boring compared to the next 50 text messages somebody gets in the time of watching this video or compared to the emails that pop up or compared to the other YouTube news or Facebook news or someone's news feed or some, some crazy thought. The online world has put us in a position to where people have become so low on the priority scale and ourselves have become so high. We have to change that. We have to look back and say, this is it. And so I live my life at every standard that I dedicate time to each, my, each one of my relationships. Each one of my relationships with, with people is very important. I have had some people comment on some of my videos in the past. Um, I remember their names, or at least their usernames, and uh, I won't forget them. And it's important that to me. I don't know who they are. I've never seen them, but they're people behind the screen. They're actually people with full lives. They're, and this sounds crazy, like, oh, yeah, I knew that, but they're real people. They have problems. They have things they need to resolve. They have issues. They have whatever else. They have talents and traits to give to the world. And sometimes you just need to talk to them to exploit that. So anyway, that's my message for today. Sorry for the rant. If you're interested, go ahead and watch that. I apologize for my dog. And uh, leave comments. Love to hear what you guys think. Yes, if you want to leave a negative comment, go ahead. I'm giving you permission to troll. Just post your comment below and hate on me all you want. Um, but that is my viewpoint. Thank you very much.